The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm golden hue across the water park as I made my way through the throngs of excited visitors. Laughter and splashes echoed in the air, creating an atmosphere of carefree joy. It was a perfect day to forget the troubles of the world and indulge in the pleasures the park had to offer. Little did I know that the tranquil allure of the reflecting pool would lead me into the heart of a nightmare beyond imagination. As the day wore on, I found myself drawn to the serene beauty of the reflecting pool. The water's surface was a mirror to the sky above, capturing the fluffy clouds and vibrant hues like a work of art. I settled onto a nearby bench, content to lose myself in the calming sight. Time seemed to slow down as I gazed into the pool's depths. The world around me faded into the background, and all that remained was the gentle ripple of the water and my own reflection staring back at me. The longer I stared, the more I became captivated by the idea that there was something more beneath the surface, a hidden realm waiting to be discovered. As minutes turned into an hour, an unsettling feeling began to creep over me. It was as if the reflection in the water was more than just a mirror of my appearance, it was a window into my subconscious fears and anxieties. The image of myself grew distorted, contorted by shadows that seemed to stretch and twist with malevolent intent. Unease nodded me, urging me to tear my gaze away from the pool. But a morbid curiosity held me in its grip, like a moth drawn to a flickering flame. I watched as the distorted reflection shifted, taking on monstrous proportions, a grotesque mockery of my own form. Panic gripped my chest, and I forced myself to look away, breaking the hypnotic hold of the water's surface. A shiver ran down my spine as I realized that my hands were trembling. The experience left me unsettled, questioning my own sanity. I told myself it was a trick of the light, a product of staring for too long. With a deep breath, I stood up, deciding to put some distance between myself and the unnerving pool. But the image of the distorted reflection lingered in my mind, a haunting memory that refused to be dismissed. I found myself wandering the park, seeking distractions to pull me away from the unease that had settled in my gut. The joyful screams of riders on the water slides and the carefree chatter of families provided a temporary respite, but the memory of the reflecting pool continued to haunt me. As the day drew to a close and the sun began its descent, I found myself inexplicably drawn back to the pool. It was as if an invisible force tugged at my thoughts, compelling me to return to the very source of my fear. The water's surface, once serene and inviting, now seemed like a portal to a nightmare realm. I stood before the pool, my heart pounding in my chest. The setting sun cast long shadows across the water, giving it an almost otherworldly appearance. Part of me wanted to turn away and forget what had transpired earlier, but another part was driven by a curiosity that bordered on obsession. With hesitant steps, I approached the edge of the pool once more. My reflection stared back at me, seemingly normal this time, but I knew better than to trust what I saw. The memories of the monstrous distortion flooded my mind, and a sense of dread settled over me. My rational mind battled against my growing unease. I tried to remind myself that it was just a reflection, a trick of the light, but the whispering doubts persisted. The urge to confront my fear, to prove that it was all in my head, overwhelmed me. I leaned in closer, my breath catching as I met my own eyes in the reflection. The water's surface seemed to ripple and shift, the edges of my reflection blurring and warping. My heart raced, and I couldn't tear my gaze away, as if some unseen force held me captive. And then, like a storm breaking free from the clouds, my worst fears materialized before me. The water's surface seemed to shatter, the reflection fragmenting into a chaotic mosaic of horrifying images. Scenes of darkness and despair played out within the fractured shards, images of death, isolation, and relentless terror. I stumbled back, my mind reeling from the onslaught of visions. 
It was as if the pool had become a portal to the very depths of my subconscious, a place where my deepest fears had taken on a tangible form. I could feel the tendrils of darkness reaching out, threatening to consume me whole. Desperation clawed at me as I tried to break free from the pool's hold. My pulse pounded in my ears, drowning out the sounds of the park around me. I turned to flee, but my surroundings seemed to warp and twist, the water park itself morphing into a nightmarish landscape. A sinister laughter echoed in the air, growing louder with each step I took. The sky turned a sickly shade of crimson, and the ground beneath my feet felt like shifting sand. Shadows seemed to come to life, contorting and writhing as they closed in around me. With a surge of adrenaline, I broke free. From the pool's influence, my limbs moving of their own accord. I ran, my breath coming in ragged gasps, until I finally stumbled upon a group of people who were oblivious to the horrors I had experienced. I collapsed onto the ground, my chest heaving as I struggled to catch my breath. My mind was a whirlwind of confusion and terror, the boundary between reality and nightmare blurring into a nightmarish haze. Even now, as I recount my experience, I can't shake the feeling that the reflecting pool had opened a door to a world beyond our own, a realm where our deepest fears become manifest. The memories of that day continue to haunt me, a reminder that even in the most serene of places, darkness can lurk just beneath the surface, waiting to drag us into a world of unimaginable terror. I had always been a thrill-seeker, drawn to the adrenaline rush that came from conquering the tallest rides and the steepest drops. The waterslide, known ominously as, the Abyss, had garnered a notorious reputation among park visitors. Rumors circulated about accidents and misfortunes that had befallen those who dared to ride it. Some claimed that it was cursed, that anyone who braved its twists and turns would be plagued by bad luck. Curiosity mingled with a sense of unease as I watched the water rush down the slide, the echoes of shrieks and laughter carried on the breeze. Despite the warnings and tales of the slide's curse, I couldn't resist the pull of the challenge. Perhaps it was my own skepticism or my desire to prove that superstitions were nothing more than stories. With a deep breath, I joined the line of eager riders, my heart pounding in anticipation. As I waited my turn, I overheard snippets of conversations, cautionary tales of friends who had suffered injuries and mishaps after riding the abyss. A knot of apprehension tightened in my stomach, but I pushed it aside, determined to face the slide head-on. Finally, it was my turn. I climbed the steps, my palms damp with sweat as I reached the top of the slide. A park employee gave me a reassuring smile, the kind meant to ease nerves, but it only served to intensify my anxiety. I positioned myself at the entrance of the slide, the cold rush of water hitting my skin as I took a deep breath. Without further hesitation, I pushed off and let gravity take control. The initial plunge was exhilarating, the sensation of speed and weightlessness sending a thrill coursing through my veins. But as the slide twisted and turned, a creeping unease settled in. The water seemed to grow colder, the echoes of laughter around me fading into a distant hum. As I emerged from the slide's final curve and splashed into the pool below, a sense of relief washed over me. I had survived the abyss and scathed, my doubts about the curse momentarily quelled. I climbed out of the pool, my heart still racing from the experience. That night, as I lay in bed, I dismissed the stories of the slide's curse as nothing more than urban legends. Sleep came easily, and I slipped into dreams of adventure and excitement, the water slide a mere footnote in my subconscious. But the next morning, I awoke to a sharp pain in my leg. Confused, I sat up and saw a deep, angry red mark on my thigh, surrounded by bruised skin. It looked like a burn, as if something scalding had touched my skin. I racked my brain, trying to remember how I could have gotten such an injury, 
but nothing came to mind. As the days passed, the pain in my leg intensified. The burn mark grew more prominent, and the skin around it took on a sickly hue. Concerned, I visited a doctor, hoping for an explanation. After examining the mark, the doctor looked at me gravely. It looks like a chemical burn, he said, his voice tinged with worry. But I can't determine what might have caused it. I left the doctor's office with a prescription for ointment and a sense of unease that nodded me. I couldn't shake the feeling that the burn was connected to my ride on the abyss, that perhaps the rumors of the slide's curse held some truth. As the days turned into weeks, the burn mark showed no signs of healing. In fact, it seemed to worsen, as if a malevolent force was at work. I experienced odd occurrences, objects in my home moved on their own, shadows seemed to shift and dance in unnatural ways, and a sense of foreboding settled over me like a dark cloud. I began to research the history of the water park, hoping to find answers to the mysteries that plagued me. What I discovered sent chills down my spine, there had indeed been a string of accidents and injuries associated with the abyss. Some riders had suffered broken bones, others had experienced inexplicable injuries, and a few had even disappeared without a trace. The more I delved into the stories, the more convinced I became that the curse of the abyss was real. The slide seemed to hold a malevolent power, one that brought misfortune to those who dared to ride it. I tried to dismiss my fears, to tell myself that it was all a coincidence, but the burn mark on my leg remained a constant reminder of the inexplicable. One evening, as I lay awake in bed, I heard a faint whispering coming from outside my window. I sat up, my heart racing, and peered out into the darkness. The shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and a chill ran down my spine as I saw a figure standing in the distance, its eyes fixed on me. The figure beckoned to me, its hand outstretched, and a feeling of dread settled over me. Despite my fear, I felt an irresistible compulsion to go to it. I stumbled out of bed and walked towards the window, my movements robotic, as if I were under some kind of trance. As I reached the window, the figure's face came into view, and I froze in horror. It was a distorted, twisted version of myself, its features contorted into a malevolent grin. Its eyes gleamed with an unnatural light, and its voice echoed in my mind, a haunting whisper that sent shivers down my spine. I've been waiting for you, it hissed, its words the sinister promise of the horrors to come. With a surge of terror, I tore my gaze away from the window and stumbled back. The compulsion that had gripped me released its hold, and I collapsed onto the floor, gasping for breath. From that moment on, the curse of the abyss consumed my life. I became plagued by accidents and misfortunes, I tripped and fell, narrowly avoiding serious injuries, my belongings disappeared and reappeared in odd places, and a sense of impending doom hung over me like a shroud. I knew that I had to break the curse, to find a way to free myself from its malevolent grip. With the help of experts in the supernatural, I embarked on a journey to uncover the truth behind the abyss and its cursed waterslide. What I discovered was a tale of darkness and despair, of a waterslide that had been built on a site with a tragic history. Long ago, the land had been the site of a terrible accident, where lives had been lost and souls had been left in turmoil. The waterslide had become a conduit for the restless spirits, a way for them to seek revenge and inflict their pain on those who dared to ride it. Armed with this knowledge, I confronted the abyss one final time. The waterslide loomed before me, its blue tubes a twisted mockery of joy. With a determined heart, I climbed the steps and positioned myself at the entrance. As I pushed off and hurtled down the slide, I felt a rush of energy, a surge of determination to break the curse that had tormented me. As I emerged from the slide and plunged into the pool below, I felt a sense of release, as if a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. The water washed over me, cleansing away the darkness that had plagued me for so long. 
I swam to the edge of the pool, my heart filled with a newfound hope. In the days that followed, I felt the curse's grip on my life gradually weaken. The burn mark on my leg began to fade, and the shadows that had haunted me seemed to retreat. The malevolent figure that had beckoned to me from the window appeared less frequently, its power diminished by my confrontation with the abyss. The curse of the waterslide had been broken, its hold on me shattered by my determination to face the darkness that had consumed me. As I look back on those harrowing days, I am reminded of the power of belief, in curses, in the supernatural, and in the strength to overcome even the most malevolent forces. Though the waterslide's twisted reputation lives on, I carry with me the knowledge that I faced my fears head-on and emerged victorious. The shadows may still linger in the corners of my mind, but I know that I am no longer bound by the curse that once threatened to consume me. The water park was alive with the sounds of splashing and laughter as families and friends enjoyed a day of fun in the sun. The sun hung high in the sky, casting a warm glow on the towering water slides and the sprawling pools below. Excitement was palpable in the air, and I was no exception, after all, who could resist the allure of thrilling water rides on a scorching summer day? As I surveyed the various attractions, one ride caught my eye, the aquatic abyss. Towering above the rest, its serpentine tubes wound and twisted in a mesmerizing dance. Eager to embrace adventure, I joined the line of riders, the anticipation building with each step closer to the ride's entrance. The line moved quickly, and before I knew it, I stood at the threshold of the aquatic abyss. A park employee handed me a rubber tube and offered a cheerful smile, his enthusiasm only adding to my own excitement. With a nod of gratitude, I took the tube and climbed the stairs that led to the ride's entrance. As I positioned myself on the tube, a cool breeze ruffled my hair, a refreshing contrast to the summer heat. The entrance to the tunnel loomed ahead, a dark abyss that promised an exhilarating journey. Without hesitation, I pushed off, my heart racing as I was propelled into the darkness. The tunnel was a blur of colors and sensations as I navigated its twists and turns. The rush of water against my skin, the echoes of my own laughter, and the occasional flashes of colored lights combined to create an otherworldly experience. I lost track of time as the tunnel carried me further into its depths. But as I rounded a corner, my heart skipped a beat, the tunnel was flooded. Water gushed from the walls, turning the ride into a submerged labyrinth. Panic clenched my chest as I struggled to comprehend the situation. I was trapped, surrounded by rising water, and the exit seemed unreachable. Fear churned in my stomach as I realized that the water level was steadily rising. My instincts kicked in, and I paddled with my hands, trying to move towards higher ground within the tunnel. The fluorescent lights that lined the walls cast an eerie glow on the water's surface, creating strange shadows that danced around me. With each passing moment, the water crept higher, my efforts to escape becoming more desperate. The once exciting ride had transformed into a nightmare, the confined space of the tunnel making me feel claustrophobic and trapped. My heart pounded in my chest, the sound echoing in the hollow space around me. As I struggled to keep my head above water, a chilling sensation washed over me, the feeling that I was not alone. The tunnel may have been flooded, but I had the distinct impression that I was being watched. I glanced around, my eyes straining to pierce the darkness beyond the eerie glow of the lights. Movement caught my attention, a flicker of movement in the water, a disturbance that seemed to be following me. Dread settled over me like a heavy shroud as I realized that something was swimming alongside me in the murky water. Panic surged within me, and I paddled faster, the fear of the unknown driving me forward. The water continued to rise, and with it, the feeling of being pursued grew stronger. I could hear the faint sound of splashes and gurgles, 
as if something was moving just out of sight. My mind raced, conjuring images of unseen creatures lurking beneath the surface, waiting to pull me under. With a surge of determination, I pushed through the water, using every ounce of strength to reach the tunnel's exit. The distant light seemed impossibly far away, the journey a relentless battle against the rising water and the eerie presence that seemed to be closing in on me. My lungs burned, and my muscles ached as I finally reached the tunnel's end. I emerged from the water, gasping for air and shaking with a mix of exhaustion and fear. The park employee who had handed me the tube rushed over, concern etched on his face. Are you okay? he asked, his voice filled with genuine worry. I nodded, unable to find my voice. My eyes darted back to the flooded tunnel, half expecting to see something emerge from the water. But there was nothing, only the dark expanse of the tunnel and the unsettling feeling that something had been there with me. The park employee helped me to my feet, offering words of reassurance as he led me away from the aquatic abyss. The ordeal had left me shaken, my nerves frayed by the encounter in the flooded tunnel. I wanted nothing more than to put the experience behind me, to forget the sensation of being pursued by something unseen. As I made my way through the park, the laughter and splashes around me took on an eerie quality. The shadows seemed to dance with a life of their own, and the once inviting attractions now held a hint of menace. I couldn't shake the feeling that the waterslide's curse had manifested itself in a new and terrifying way, trapping riders in a flooded tunnel with an unsettling presence. To this day, the memory of that experience lingers in the back of my mind, a reminder that even the most innocent of attractions can become a gateway to a nightmare. The waterslide's curse had taken on a new form, one that left me haunted by the sensation of being pursued by something malevolent, hidden beneath the water's surface.